The brand is as strong as ever, and every time we open in a brand new city, as we just did this past weekend in my hometown of St. Louis, the the welcome is just absolutely extraordinary. So we're learning. Our, our same store sales base is quite small still, mostly in the Northeast. Um, we feel really, really excited about next year. If, but listen, anyone would put would love to put up a Costco comp right now. I mean, ten and a half percent. You know, it, so if if you're struggling with the comps, is it? sort of the strategy to say, you know what, fine, we're just going to expand all over the place. How are you weighing those trade-offs? So Shake Shack is not going to expand all over the place. We're actually pretty careful about it. It took us five years to open a second store. It took us another five years to go west of the eastern time zone. So we're pretty careful about it. Our culture is what matters more than anything. And you can only grow as fast as you can grow people. But we seem to have an amazing bench of talented people who have the hospitality gene, and that's really what matters at Shake Shack. Nobody ever got hired at Shake Shack because we said, prove to me how many great milkshakes you've made in your career. They get hired for who they are, and that is really the governor of our growth. Uh, since you bring it up, let's pivot to a, a larger conversation about tipping at your restaurants. I know this is something that you've been dogged about for, it's probably been a couple of years now. Two since, years. Since the announcement. Are you going to just chuck it and go back to the old? Oh, way? absolutely not. No, we're actually very, very happy. It's been a challenge for sure. Don't let yeah. anyone ever tell you it's easy. But we began this two years ago at our restaurant, The Modern, at the Museum of Modern Art. We've added another 10 restaurants since that point, and it's working. And it's really, really important because what the tipping culture does is to create a situation where tipped employees are now making 350% of what non-tipped employees can make. And that disparity just is not fair, especially if you have a culture that says we are for our employees. You can't only be for half of your employees. And we, I, I get all that, but it's interesting just to, when you talk to, and again, this is a lot of this is based on people speaking with anonymous sources at your restaurants and that sort of thing, so I get that. But when they talk to people experiencing the changes, there's a lot of negative feedback. They said there's been a lot of turnover at the restaurants and even some of the diners aren't happy with seeing those menu prices go up and the quality of the service go down. And I'd have to counter that by saying that our covers at all of our non-tipping restaurants are actually as strong or stronger than any of the handful of restaurants that we still have tipping. We have macro issues that affect comps throughout the restaurant industry. I wouldn't segment it for one category or another, but it certainly is not uh, anything to do with tipping whatsoever. Uh, when do you see those macro issues abating? Because it is something that Mr. Chano's talked about as well. We're watching carefully. You know, we're, it's, it's kind of a fascinating moment because there's never been more interest globally in food. Certainly, people take pictures of it, they blog about it, they tweet about it, Instagram constantly. And yet, we're at a point when People are, you know, they're not sure, should I be pushing a button and getting it delivered at home? Should I be pushing a button and getting a meal kit delivered at home? Should I You're go to the store? You're describing Tuesday nights, but yeah. Yeah, so should I go to a restaurant? Should I go to a fast casual? Should I go to a fine casual? Should I go to a casual restaurant? The good news for consumers right now are there are more good ways to eat food than ever, but there are so many ways to eat good food than ever that the existing pool of, of outlets are going to probably feel a pinch for a little while. Uh, let me ask you about something that's probably difficult to talk about for the industry, but uh, you're not the only ones right now dealing with it. After Mario Batali, after the spotted pig and everything that allegedly happened there, um, is, is there rampant sexual harassment in the restaurant industry? And if so, what do you think needs to be done about it? Well, it makes me really sick, I have to say that. We have always had a culture at Union Square Hospitality Group which we call enlightened hospitality. And we actually put our customers second. We put our staff members first. That alone obviously is not going to eradicate the errant behavior of some people. And what we've learned is that, uh, I've always been taught that the fish stinks from the head down. What I've also learned though is that just because the head doesn't stink doesn't mean the head doesn't have to be completely aware of every single thing happening within our restaurants you, and, and have a short, short, short patience for anything that crosses the line. Are there, sort of have there been responses that you think your company has taken when those issues have come up that sets you apart from how others have dealt with it or have you not had this come up? I hope there are. I mean, I, I hope that we're the kind of company that people feel very, very comfortable speaking to our HR department, which is extraordinary. I hope we're the kind of company that feels comfortable 
hosting roundtables with our employees to let just just let people talk. Uh, you know, whether I'm a boss or a parent, I've learned a long time ago. I don't necessarily have all the answers, but I do have to use my two ears and be a really good listener. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.